Praise the Lord. I praise Jesus for being here. Praise him for his goodness, his kindness, his tenderest mercy. Thank you, praise the Lord. He's such a wonderful Savior. I always look for confirmation. And the children got up and they sang this little light of mine. But the song that I had was, what kind of church is this? All right. And the Lord, I'm asking you, what kind of church is this? What kind of church is it? What kind of church is it? What kind of church is it? Then let the church be the church. This is a sanctified, you said at your own mouth, it's a sanctified church. Matthew, the 13th chapter. I sincerely desire your prayer. And you just sang, he's my friend. Friend tells you the truth. Matthew, 14th chapter. And I'm going to read the 44 through the 46th verse. Matthew 13, 13, excuse me. Matthew 13, 44 through 46. The king, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the king of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I was reading in the paper where this lady, she had a pink diamond, nine carat. And uh, she, she, she was filthy rich, I mean rich. But that thing had been in a vault since the 40s. And she had been living in a hospital since she was in her late 30s. She was reclusive. And so she needed, you know, she had mansions, Nobody lived in them, but they were being taken care of. And so she sold that diamond. And that pink diamond, nine carat, she almost got, she got $15.8 million for it. And then they call this Black History Month, but I'll deal with that some other time. But I saw a picture, and it was a runaway slave, and he had joined the Union Army. And they showed his back. It was absolutely deplorable. But then it came to my mindset in Isaiah, talking about Jesus. Bad as that man's back looked. You knew he had a back. But the scripture says Jesus, his face, his vicious was more marred than any man. He didn't even look human the way they beat him. And that, even though that latest pearl came in for that kind of money, Jesus gave his all for the church. It doesn't even compare the church, the worth of the church. That diamond doesn't eat all that she had. It doesn't even compare. 
And you know the thing about it is this. The people that started it was Jesus' own people, the Jews. And here, they, now, church, they were church people. I'm going to put it like that. Number one, they took him in the night. Then after Jesus said, you say that I am, what more do we, what more do we need? What more? They started hitting him. Yes, the Lord. They started buffeting him. And then had the nerve when they turned him over to Pilate, didn't want to go in because they didn't want to get defiled. Hypocrites. Some of us in here all week long, we do what we want to do. And then when we get to church, I'm so sanctified. You lying. You're lying. I may not know everything, but I see things. When I used to go to my mother's, I used to pass this little orchard. I didn't know what kind of orchard it was. But in the summertime, when the fruit was on it, I said, oh, that's that's an apple right there, and that's a peach right there. Don't you know the scripture says, by their fruit you will know them. God is looking for a sanctified church. He didn't die that we stay like we were. If that was the case, he wouldn't have died. But we live as close to the edge as we can. You know what we do? <laughs> they allow certain things. They, they allow your wedding ring, but we got other rings too. And we put on what we say is a watch, but that thing got more sparklers than the 4th of July. Who you think you fooled? <laughs> Living as close to the edge as we possibly can. Some of them are all wide, and it's got a face on it. Had a good little missionary. And I talked to her one day. I said, what is that you got? I said, is that a, no, this is a watch bracelet. I said, honey, when the saints see that, they not going to say that's a watch. They're going to say she got on a charm bracelet. It don't belong in here. There is a time we're going to wear jewelry, but that's when we get in glory. Don't put things before the horse, before the cart. Cart before the horse, rather. There is a time. But right now, what God is doing, when you get a jewel out of the, out of the earth, diamond or whatever, that thing got a whole lot of nasty crust and everything else on it. It's got to be polished. It's got to be cut. And you got to cut it a certain way so it gives out the most sparkle. But we don't want to do that. We'd rather be a zero coin, you know, them fake jewelries. This world is so sad now that they, I, I was listening to the radio one day. They even have a thing called biz no where you can go on there and look and pretend you were there. And somebody's going to buy it. Because the world is a big lie. When the world wants to see God, they got to come to church. But when they get in here and see the same thing, they figure what I'm doing just as bad out there. And they are too. Because at least they are what they are. They're sinners. But when you come up in here and you get baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, you're supposed to strive to live holy. 
Let the church be the church. Sometimes I'm sitting in here and some of the music and the way it's played, I said, look, you reckon yourself to be dead. I remember back in the day, we slow dragged. Don't belong in here. I'm not saying that sometimes you don't hear a song that's nice. I'm not saying that. But some of these people, we rage about. I was in the paper yesterday. I don't even know the man. I've heard his name. Jeff Majors. <laughs> He's a jazz harpist. And then they added, in a gospel. What kind of gospel? He ain't preaching the true gospel. You know what's driving it? Money. They are, and more and more people are listening to quote unquote gospel. You know why? Because it don't sound like gospel. It tickles their flesh. But it don't do nothing for their soul. And the Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is money. Singing a song, my praise is shifting the atmosphere. It's shifting it all right. What kind of praise is it? I have another scripture. Y'all pray for me because I haven't, haven't been well this week. Matthew 5.13 Ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt hath lost his savor wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men put men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Did you hear that? Did you read it for yourself? We don't have time. We are so busy chasing that dollar. And what you don't understand is it's the Lord that takes care of us. You got a job, it's because of the Lord. It ain't because of what you did. It's because of plenty of people in college and don't have a job. And they're so sad, the advertising come on the radio. Oh, I know the economy is down. I, don't, I can't say it verbatim. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and get me another degree. So when it does, that is foolishness. You don't even have one with the one you got, but you got that debt. We feed into a line. I mean, it's right in your face line. You know, what, you know what most of these colleges are all about? See, you got to know the devil. That's right. He has an agenda. That's right. Now, one of my grandsons told me, he said, Grandma, say, they got this, they say it's an original. And you got to take this course. And he said, they said that it's a question as whether there really was a David. 
that's your education for you. I heard a program years ago, and a girl was on, and she said, you know, when I got in there, I thought that, they said, oh, we don't believe that stuff. We just teach it. It's just a job to us. One professor came in there and said, if I could take everything that you learned, if I can get it out of you, I will have done my job. The devil is after the church, and he doesn't care what vehicle he uses. Am I telling you not to get your education? No. Certain jobs, you need it. But let's not lose sight on the real thing. Let's not lose sight on what this is all about. We're just passing through here. We're just passing through here. This is not my home. Lord, I'm so glad it's not. This world is terrible. Terrible. I'm fighting about the guns and this and that and other and talk that food and about guns don't p kill people. Men do. Well, who pulled the trigger? If he ain't got a gun, what he, how he going to pull the trigger? Feeding into this mess. The church. The church is feeding into this mess. Mother Temple said years ago, this was years ago, she said the Lord made her know that the gods of this world, and you're going to find over in Kings, Elijah, he told them, he said, why halt ye between two opinions? If God be God, follow him. If Baal be God, follow him. You know what the outcome was, don't you? And that's the same thing. Why halt ye between two opinions? She said, the Lord said, that Baal and these children and they were not playing ball like they are now. They had baseball, football, basketball. Now you got all kinds of ball. Soccer, golf ball, tennis ball. All kinds of ball. And it takes people's time. So I don't have time to sit down with little Johnny and teach him anything about the Bible because I got him in sports programs. And when he get to church, he too tired to listen to the lesson. The Bible said, when you walk along the way, teach him. When you're sitting at the table, teach him. When you're lying down in bed, teach him. Why? Because he gonna come up against something that if you don't teach him, he don't have nothing to fight with. You're going to tell them, you need to be saved. You do too. Let the church be the church. Give me this. Give me that. Give me the other. You better say, give me more Jesus. Wrapped up, tied up in this world. Don't you know salt? You must have salt. I don't care what the CDC says or whoever. You've got to have salt. Salt is very important to the body. And God has fixed it so even the animals out in the forest, they have a place they go, they call it salt lick. They know how to get that salt. You have to have salt. The scripture tells us to have salt in yourself. And I liken salt to Holy Ghost. Have it in yourself. Salt, from a natural point of view, if you notice in, in, the, in the Old Testament, those different sacrifices they had to make, and the Lord said, and be sure you have salt. You know why? Salt. In the church, 
in the church, it's them wave blows, they had leaven in them because in the church, it's sin. But the Holy Ghost, salt from a natural point of view, you put, if you don't put in that bread and you put that yeast in there, that yeast is going to go all over. But what salt does, it holds down the action of leaven. The Holy Ghost tampers down sin. It gets rid of it. Now I was saying, shifting the atmosphere. You ain't shifting no atmosphere. Let me tell you one thing. The word is truth. And the word says, obey them that have the rule over you. You may not always understand. You may not always agree. But you better get on your knees and pray. You talking about shifting the atmosphere and we just as hard-headed, stiff-necked, mean as rattlesnakes. Don't have no respect for nobody. Jesus, when he went up to Jerusalem, now that's our example. He went up to Jerusalem with his parents and they did what they had to do and they had left thinking he was with them. But when they looked for him, he wasn't there. So they went all the way back to Jerusalem. And Mary said, son, why had that uh, dealt with us like this? And he said, didn't you know I was about my father's business? And I got to pondering that thing. I said, you know, Joseph probably said, I ain't seen him on no, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm just thinking from a natural point of view. Mary pondered it in, his, in her heart. But you know what Jesus did? He humbled himself and went right on back home with it. That was the Lord from glory. If God could humble himself, and the scripture says he humbled himself to behold the things in heaven. My Lord, he get way down when he behold the things in the earth. God said, I'm going to present my church to me. We like to say, oh God, coming back, looking for a church. He don't say that. He said, I'm going to present it unto myself, a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Get in the church. You, I'm not talking about this building, because a whole lot of us are in here in the building. But we're not in the church. By their fruit, you shall know them. Everything that come down the pike, we put it on. And it's a disgrace to come up in here looking the way we look. Brothers and sisters. And we like to, oh, he's of that persuasion. That ain't the only abomination. That's not the only abomination. Don't you know the scripture says that if a woman wears that that pertains, that's the word, pertain. Oh, they making women's pants. You can call it what you want. They're pants. And say a man is not the, supposed to put on a woman's garment. Now, if a man came in here with a dress on, we'd have, oh. But a woman walking in, we wouldn't open my mouth. Abomination is abomination in God's sight. Let the church be the church. Sometimes see some of y'all in the street, and you don't even know you're seen. But you're not hidden. God pulls covers. You're not hidden. Yeah. And you know why he pulls them? He wants to save you. That's why. That's why he got David. God loves us. He died for us. And he wants to save us. 
But I'm going to tell you right now, in his stead, you ain't going to heaven anyhow. We need to get right with God and do it now. It's not a lot of time left. And some of us don't have a lot of time, period. God only promised us 70 years. Well, I'm already working on two extra. My time, really, if it's going, it's out. But if by reason of strength, and if the Lord see fit to belong it. But you don't know that. Oh, I got time. I got time. You don't know. You can go right out here and get hit by a car. It happens. You can go right home and tree fall on your house. It happens. Just like that, gone into eternity. And I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't make a, if you live to be 150 and you don't have Jesus, it doesn't mean anything. Not anything. But the Lord doesn't want this stuff in his house. All that other undercover stuff you're doing, you better stop. I don't know nobody's business in here. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But the Lord knows, yes, he does. and he sends his warning, because after a while, he's going to expose you. And we run our mouths. Sometimes I said, is this a church? People get upset when you go to the move if you're talking. And we're in church, listening to what God Almighty has to say, and we're talking, talking back and sassing. What kind of church is this? Hanctified. Yeah, we hanked it. Because you know what you're doing? You're telling God, shut up. Shut up, Lord. I don't want to hear that. Well, I don't see. That's your problem. Lord, give me some eye salve so I can see like I ought to see. Lord, make straight paths for my feet, Lord. I didn't come over here to be lost. I could have stayed in the world. I was already half crazy out there. I could have stayed on out there and finished it up. And you were too. You wasn't having no good time. You thought you were. Because if you was having a good time, you wouldn't be in here. So why come over here? But sometimes, sometimes people, oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I, I, I got high blood pressure. A whole lot of us got high blood pressure. Sitting home ain't gonna help it. And most time we're sitting home looking at that TV and that stuff that's coming on there, it definitely ain't helping you high blood pressure. A lot of filth. Nothing is sacred anymore. One time you didn't see women dressed like that. Ladies of the evening did, but not in church. Not in church. Number one, when you see that stuff, it's too low already. And then you come in and put a little, and it's still too low. The bottom is too short. The bottom, and a lot of times, I look, I said, now that is just as crazy. They got a grad long skirt on and all this showing. I said, they need to get that thing together. Cut some off the bottom and put it on the top, and you're good to go. You laughing, but it is the truth. 
And if it's bothering me and bothering the brothers, those that are saved, right. it's definitely bothering God. God didn't die for me to be naked. I was already naked in sin. And he died on Calvary. Cover me. Let the church be the church. It's a hand clapping, foot stomping, tongue talking, apostolic Pentecostal church. And I'm not talking to these churches that have gone the other way, dealing with, come on, you come, you come on, go get, you come on too. That's ecumenical. You know what? That's that Catholic stuff. I'm telling you, the devil is getting it together and we can't see it. He's getting it together. I heard a song, I don't really listen to it, but I just heard it. And I, I asked my granddaughter, I said, who is that? She said, Pamela, man, tell me, I'm all churched out. I said, yeah, because you do be too busy, and we sing that song, and I don't sing it, so when you sing it and I don't sing it, it ain't got nothing to do with you. Let's have church. That's the problem. We're too busy having church instead of being the church. He said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Not I'm going to have my church. I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Don't mean he ain't going to fight. It starts with your mind. Somebody said, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, and it is. When God saves you and gives you a good mind and you still going in the same way, it's a terrible thing to waste. See, all church out. And that's what we do. Man, we get in here sometime and we shout it. And we dancing. And I ain't against dancing and shouting. And then when the word comes, we sleep. What happened? You're all churched out. That's what happened. You're all churched out. Let the church be the church. And God talks to his church. He talks to his people. And you know why? I want you to be saved. I love you, and a good parent, even though it hurts them to their heart, they're going to discipline that child. And all y'all hear me talk about this one in particular. That he don't tell you, after I used to have to chest him, I ain't doing it right away because I knew it. He figured, after I had to chest him, a little while later, I'd grab him and hug him, say, you know I love you. Yeah, he, he felt like that was debatable, but <laughs> nevertheless. You got to show him love. And that's what God is doing now. I love you. I'm going to chasten you. I'm trying to curb you. I don't want you to go to the lake of fire. So come on and really be the church. Give up the world and come on. Don't you want to go? This little stuff down here don't mean nothing. You want to wear jewelry? My God, when I get up into heaven, I'm going through a pearly gate. Streets of gold, I can see out through them. Everything has a time. And we want everything. I, one preacher said, Never mind, pie in the sky. I want it right now with ice cream on top. I'm sorry, he was foolish. That's foolishness. Because sometimes you get to the point you can't even eat. All this that we're looking at, all this, Looking out there, keep, don't keep looking out there in the world. You get this, and you say, oh, I like that even better. And you buy, and you buy, and you buy. 
And then when your bills come due, you ain't got no money to pay them. Foolishness. And some of us wonder why we're struggling. Not everybody. Somebody called me and they said, Mama, so I've been working for this man these many years and he lost part of his contract. And this man has over a $2 million contract just in Montgomery County. He's all down, black man, all down North Carolina places. And so they said to me, it, it, it was only a ten thousand, and he said he gonna cut our salary. I let him talk, and when he got finished, you know what I told him? I said, you know what? God gonna get his money because you don't pay your tithe. You were taught to give your tithe. Some of us in here struggling because you don't give your tithe, and if you give your tithe. Then you put your hand on the table. Ain't no way in the world nobody should come across it that got a job, should come across it, put no hand on no table. Take some money out of there. Don't drink as many sodas. Give God what's due him. All of it belongs to him. He just let us use it. Let the church be the church. Shouldn't have to beg for last one. Shouldn't have to beg for a building fund. We complain, ah, bah, 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 but you don't want to get nothing. God didn't give us what he has given us for us to spend it all on ourselves. There are people that are in need and hurting. Right in the church. The Bible said the poor you're going to have with you always. You might be poor now, but when you get the glory, you ain't going to be poor no more. Like I said, the Lord loves us. That's why he sends his word. He sends his word to heal us. And we need healing in all areas of our minds, our souls, our bodies, our finances. We need healing. And it's healing in the church. Don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Yeah, I want to go. make the altar call. The plan of salvation is repent. Turn away from your sins. Then be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Take on your husband's name. And it's, it's promised ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, some things get lost. We, we, you know, we get busy and all. But we need to be saved. Give the plan of salvation. Give up the world and come on. Don't you want to go? Oh, give up the world. Oh, oh. I go. Well, yes, I want to go. Well, come on, come on, come on. Don't you want to go? Come on, come on, come on, come on, saints, come on. Yeah, come on, come on. Come on, come on.
now. Come on, saints. Come on. You know, good word. Good word. Wow. Don't you want to go? Yes, I want. Yeah. Give up the world and come on. Don't you want to come on? You ready this morning after hearing that wonderful message? You need to come. Soul searching message. Something to make you think about yourself. Self examination, personal insight. This ain't about nobody else. You can't look at nobody else. I gotta look at myself. Make sure that I'm ready. And if I'm not ready, come.